Okay, so we're now looking at our solar thermal array. Um, it's, uh, we are told, the biggest in Ireland, um, 500 square meters of it. Um, flat plate panels. People sometimes ask why we use flat plate because they've picked up the idea that um, evacuated tubes are more efficient. Uh, my answer to that is always the same. It depends what you mean by efficiency. These things give you more kilowatts per, per euro. Uh, the evacuated tubes give you more kilowatts per square meter. And if you're trying to fit a solar array onto a, a fairly small roof area, that may be critical, but it's not critical here. So 500 square meters works out to four square meters per house once the eco village is finished. Um, and um, that just illustrates another of the economies you get by sharing the facility. If you do typically put about six meters on a normal private house, uh, but because this is a shared facility, you know, the day when you're, you've got six people staying and they all want a bath is the same day I'm away and solar panels on my house roof would be doing nothing at all. So sharing it, it gets that sort of economy of scale. We certainly would have, we'd have had quite a few experience, lessons of experience on this solar array. Um, one is that there was no thought given at the design stage to phasing it for the eco-village being incomplete. So we do now have a uh, significant potential problem um, if we have a heat wave and several days sunshine in, in succession and all our hot water storage is up to maximum temperature, what do you do with the You have to look at dumping the heat in some way. Um, uh, one of the ways to do it is you reverse the flow and you pump hot water through the panels at night and release the heat to the night sky. Uh, because if the, if the glycol overheats, it begins to decompose. This is a problem quite a lot of domestic systems have. People don't realise it when they go away in the summer and their, systems, if their system is not designed to dump excess heat. An anemometer. We do. Um, there that's there. Yeah, it's just been, that's been there for about a year and a half now, I think, maybe two years. We're recording wind data with a view to putting in a medium sized five kilowatts, something like that, uh, wind generator here on the, within the Eco Village lands. Um, uh, that would mainly be to power the district heating plant and our effluent treatment plant um, and other sort of site services like, like lighting. Um, we have, um, which may or may not be solar powered at the moment, that's still again another of the things we're costing out. Yeah. Um, but uh, this isn't a great site for wind. It's fairly low, um, it's, there's a lot of mature trees and housing around. Uh, there's very good wind not far away on the hills. There are a number of small wind farms within sight of the eco village, uh, or within, certainly within sight of Clock Jordan anyway. Um, so the more logical place to, which we'll probably do in the long run, uh, to put up a big wind generator is uh, to get into a, a sort of cooperative basis with some local farmer. 